Hello and welcome back to a new video in my C, C++ tutorial series. Before we can go on, I need to apologize. I need to apologize because uh, last video I told you we are gonna talk about more pointers today. But we are actually not. We are kind of, but we are not really talking about another type of pointer today. So why is that? Is this because something else makes a bit more sense to talk about before we go into and show you what pointers are? So what we're gonna do today feels very natural in the flow of what we are doing and is kind of like the next step to also understand the more advanced types of pointers. So today's video is gonna be about structures or structs in a short form. Structs are a way to group together variables into a reusable type or something like that. So if you take a look at this, you can see that we use the accumulate function. Now, I don't know why Visual Studio added this feature. If you press Ctrl Drive, it sits away. Yeah, I know. So basically we added this uh, computation here. So basically what we have done is we have created two working variables. These are variables that we never really care about. They are just required for our computation. And after we created these two working variables, we're going to use a function called accumulate and we call it multiple times with uh, several values to accumulate to these temporaries, which we then use to get a final result average. And yeah, that was fine. And now I want to make this a bit more interesting or a bit more rigid. So the idea is that, well, these temporary variables are quite complicated. So in our case, it's just two. It's just the sum of the number. But imagine that you're doing really complex computation, maybe where you need like 20 temporaries or um, let's say even more, like 30 or whatever, like a big value. So for example, if you're doing iteration for uh, numerical mathematical uh, methods, the iterations might need to store every uh, step of the iteration to uh, kind of like also see if it is sufficient and uh, uh, have all steps of iteration available and you might want to access them. So it would really be a pain to create all these variables every time we were going to use that. So basically the issue is while the accumulate is basically inside a function, this whole logic, how we basically create our variables, what the values of them are, um, what uh, we need to input in which order into the accumulate function, it all depends and we need to know it. It depends on what we are doing and we need to know it for everything that we do. So basically, if we want to reuse accumulate a new function, for example, an int f, function f, and if we want to reuse accumulate now, we need to have first to create again the sum, the uh, num value, and if you want to do this a bit short, you can also do it like that. You can say sum equals that and num equals that, but I don't really like to teach this way of declaring variables because I personally don't like to use them because of several reasons, and it's a bit more readable if you do it like that, but you could do this as well. So the idea is every time we reuse that, we need to declare sum again, we need to declare num again, we need to remember how to use accumulate. Well, we are using Visual Studio, which is going to assist us as soon as we open the bracket but still we need to take a look okay sum hmm sum is a pointer we need to type it and well in our case it is very short but imagine this to be way way more like something like that num zero one two three four if you have something like that again every time you call a uh, 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 accumulate you need to do a one one num2 already lost the num0 there so it's it's really bad and if you're doing something wrong like i did i forgot the num0 things are not going to go well and you're going to have a hell of a lot of time struggling with that and that's why the uh, c language has a feature of structs a struct basically allows you to group variables together so for example we have this in 64t for the sum and the in 64t for the num. And what we want to do is we accu want to accumulate this into a uh, into a box, basically, into a, or not accumulate, but we want to group these two together into a box, which is maybe called uh, accumulate data, something like that that we can then use. And this is why we can have structs. So what you can do in C is you can declare a struct. Just write struct and you can see it's going to be recognized by the application or by the compiler Visual Studio. And what you then need to do is you need to give the struct a name. So in our case it's going to be the accumulate data. So this is going to be the name of the struct. Now how are we going to define what's inside the struct? Well, we're going to use again the brackets. If we use the oh, wrong brackets, these brackets, you can see it's automatically opening this up 
and at the end it's gonna um, close this up with a semicolon. So it's gonna create a struct with an empty pair of um, curly brackets which are terminated by a semicolon. This semicolon is now important. If we have a struct, we need a terminating semicolon. And what we now basically gonna do is we're gonna tell it what the accumulation data is gonna hold. So we basically had that one here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it away from here into the struct. Now you can see that we have one issue. We are not allowed in C, later in C++ we're going to be allowed, but in C we are not allowed to give a struct default value. So we can say, well, if you are creating a new struct of the type accumulate data, we want to have the sum at zero and the num at zero. We can tell this, so we really need to put this away like that. We can do this like that. And now we have the sum and the num stored inside this box accumulate data. So now what we can do in our, our main application, we can try to create a struct. Now if you try to use the struct as a type, like in 64T and call this maybe data, you can see that this doesn't work. It doesn't know what accumulate data is. This is because accumulate data is a struct and we need to tell C that we want to use a struct. And if I write the keyword struct, C basically knows, all right, we want to create a struct. Then I give it the name of the struct and it's automatically going to see, all right, this is the struct we want to use and this is going to be called data. And boom, it is going to be all right. Now, what we still need to do is we still need to basically uh, set all the values to zero and you already saw that because I peaked it. So what I basically do, if I want to uh, set a value of a struct, I can basically type the name of the variable, in this case data, and then I can press a dot. And if I press a dot, you can see that I have access to the two variables, num and sum. I can basically say that the num is equal to zero and data sum is also equal to zero. And if I do it like that, I have the same code that we had previously, but now we don't really have the type and it's all inside of accumulate data. Well, that's not really something useful. By default, you don't want to really do this like that because this doesn't really save you something. You still need to know the initial values. You don't need to have to know the types, but you need to know the uh, initial value, which is kind of like also knowing the type, right? Because if you see what the value is, you're going to probably imagine what the type is. I mean, yeah, you don't know how big the integer is, but you at least know it's an integer. And if you basically need to know what that is an integer, you're probably going to know more about this as well. So that's not really what we want to do. So what we want to do is we want to have an helper that is automatically going to fill in the uh, accumulate data. And for that, I'm going to write a new function. So I'm going to write the function void new accumulate. Uh, how did I call this accumulate data? I think I mistyped something here. I don't know. Uh, so basically what I want to do is I want to have a function called new accumulate data and this function is going to take a pointer to that struct type. So if I do this again like that, you can see it doesn't really do this. If I do this like that pointer and call this maybe data, something like that, it's not going to work. If we do this like that, it's not going to work. Of course, if we have a pointer, we need to keyword struct again. So if I type in struct accumulate data pointer, um, and then call it data, you can see that it works. Everything is good. Nothing is red. And it basically is a working function. Now inside this function, we can now access the data pointer. Now you would be tempted to say, okay, oh, I'm going to dereferent the data and then I'm going to set the num to zero and then going to do the same again for the sum, right? Would be very straightforward. But that's not how you use pointers. Actually, pointers are a very easy thing in C and C++. Pointers have some logic around them. So basically, if you want to access a member of a pointer, so in this case, data is a struct, and if I want to access the name member, I can just type the point and select num or sum. If how I would do this uh, as well. But as you can see, as soon as I type in enter to basically fulfill this, you can see that the point gets uh, replaced to this error. This this error is a special operator in C, which basically means I don't want to access the data itself. I want to access the way I want to access the struct where data points to. So this only works for struct. So if I do this uh, arrow, I can do this how I would do this with the dot as well. But now I'm using this arrow because it's a pointer and the pointer basically means follow the pointer to the actual location and modify the value where the pointer is pointing to. And I can do this for the sum as well. And what it is uh, doing behind the hood or be under the hood basically uh, is it basically knows what the offset of num and sum is and basically can calculate the real pointer where num and sum is stored based on this initial struct pointer and the information that the compiler has about this struct type. And if we'd have this like that, we can use it in the main function by basically just calling 
new accumulate data for the data pointer. And now, as you can see, it works like a charm. We now should have, without having to know what is inside this accumulate data, we can simply see what's going on. Now, we of course need to modify our accumulate function as well to also take this struct accumulate data pointer to be sure that we can use this here as well. And now I can also do data dot, what was that, uh, sum. So data error sum plus equal. So I don't need that fancy dereferencing stuff. It's very simple. We can always just follow this pointer with the error symbol. Same here with the num. I can put this error symbol num plus plus and you can see it looks way cleaner. We don't have this dereferencing stuff in here. And that's the full idea of structs. And later on in C++, we're going to have a um, extended version of structs and we're going to have classes and classes are going to have point as well. And they're going to work the same that we have it here, just that you don't need to specify like class or something like that. You don't need to specify this later in C++, but C requires you to do this and we are still learning C. But I'm going to talk about that when we are getting to C++. The only thing that's going to change is that we don't destruct keyword than that. We can put initial values in here, but we're going to talk about this later. So now what we can basically do is we can now adjust our function call and instead of taking the num and sum, we basically can input the data itself. So data here and data there. And now you can basically see it's working as expected. We just need to put in the data and the values to accumulate to that. And we are good. Now, what you could do down here is you could say like, yeah, I want to have the sum here and I want to have the data.num and compute this from that. But the idea is that you don't know what's going on. So we are following a, a simple principle here. So the principle is that we have a new function that is creating our struct or making our struct valid after it has been created because we are creating it down here. Then a new accumulate data is preparing that struct to be used, that variable, the instance of the struct. The new accumulate data function prepares it so that we can use it. And then we're going to use the accumulate function to basically accumulate to that working copy or the data uh, of that accumulation. So we use the data in here to put it in and it should work as expected. Now, what we uh, can uh, also do or should also do here is have a function that computes the average because, well, in this case, you can see we are kind of like breaking our rule here. The rule is that we don't need to know what's inside of accumulate data, but for computing the average here, I need to know it. And that is why we need to basically write a new function for that. So what I could do now here is I could go in here and maybe say, all right, I'm going to call a create a function and say, accumulate, um, yeah, let's call it result, basically. And then I can basically say, now I'm uh, going to take accumulate data. I can press control space to bring up the selection bar so that it basically assists me what I want to get. And I could say like, yeah, I'm going to put in the data here. Uh, notice that I haven't used the pointer here. This is intentional currently. Uh, one thing that I don't want to use is a void actually since it needs to return the result. So I'm just going to do this like that and then I'm going to steal the data from here or the, the lines from here, compute this down there and then in the main I can use the accumulate result function and put in the data here to get a result. Now one thing that you might notice is that I now used uh, no pointer. I didn't use a pointer here. Does it work? We can try it out. Does it work? No, no, really. In C, it were in C plus plus. It should work, and in C uh, in, in C, of course, it works as well. So it still prints as an average, but uh, it has a issue. So if you take a look at this, basically what we are doing here is, as I already told you in the stack video and in the pointer video, if we don't have a pointer, it's going to copy that data. So now let's take a look at this struct. How big is this struct? Well, this struct has two integer values that are 64-bit width. So 64-bit is eight bytes. Which which basically means that this struct is uh, 16 bytes big. This struct, size of this struct is 16 bytes. So what is a pointer to a struct? Well, we are on a 64-bit machine. A 64-bit machine means that uh, each data that can be stored in RAM on the RAM, a random access memory, is always going to be 64-bit width. 
So the size of a kind of like unit that can be stored in RAM is 64 bit. And this means that all addresses, all pointers that we're going to use are also going to be 64 bit width. So a pointer on a 64 bit machine, if the application is compiled in 64 bit mode, is always going to be 64 bits long, which means 8 bytes. So a pointer to that structure is, uh, is uh, 8 bytes uh, big and the structure itself is 16 bytes big. Now if we are calling the accumulate result without a pointer, this means that uh, 16 bytes needs to be copied and allocated. They are allocated on the stack, which is really fast because it is already pre-allocated from the operating system. The operating system is only going to supply you with a certain amount of stack memory and you can, should normally have no issue with that and can use it until for everything until the application terminates. Sometimes you're going to have issues with that, but probably if you did something wrong or have a very computational intense algorithm. But the idea here is that the stack is fast, but of course you need memory. So if you are calling this accumulate result function with the struct itself, it basically needs to take 16 bytes for that stack. And more important, it needs to copy 16 bytes around. Now at 16 bytes is not really a big deal. It's not very slow. It's just a bit slower than just having a pointer. But the pointer also comes with cost. So in this case, it's, it's, it really doesn't matter. But later on, we're going to maybe have structs that are way bigger, like 128 bytes, maybe a kilobyte. Maybe if you're storing some big image in there, uh, a few megabytes or even gigabytes if you're storing large amount of data in there. And if you're having like a struct that is like uh, a few megabytes big, you don't want to copy this on the stack. The stack is small. Later on, we're going to see this, uh, that we can use make this differently at, at big uh, variables, but still these bytes needs to be copied. So we really want to avoid this. And in this case, we can actually do this. We can just put in a data in here, a pointer in the data, and we can use it the same way but with pointers, it doesn't really matter. And it makes things a bit more performant in the future. It doesn't need to copy that, especially if we're getting to C++, where copying can be really an intense computation depending on what you are trying to pass around. So yeah, that's basically what we are doing. So basically what I now do here is I do this the same way with pointers. And if I run this, it should still give us the same output and still be good, but it's looking way more readable, as you can see. And that's kind of like the idea of the video today. The video is very simple and short video to basically show you how you can use structs and a few functions to basically hide all your logic, hide all the implementation inside of these methods and inside of a struct that the user can just collapse here. I can just press the minus button here to collapse them all together. I don't really care what they do. I just care about my main function where I call my accumulate and use it. I don't really need to know anything about that. Works like a charm. Can run this with the 30 in here as well. Still producing the same output. All nice, all good. So that's the uh, idea of that video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>